Okay, we're going to palpate the carpal bones, which are the bones of the wrist. Uh, it consists of eight bones in two rows of four. So there's a proximal row and a distal row of carpal bones. What we're going to do is put the forearm in neutral. You're going to move along the lateral uh, aspect of the uh, radius all the way down to the radial styloid process. From there, if you move slightly distal off the radial styloid process, you're going to fall into a soft gap. From there, if you go ahead and move into ulnar deviation and radial deviation, during ulnar deviation, you'll feel the scaphoid move onto your, un, under your finger. And then with radial deviation, it's going to disappear. From that position, if you move just so slightly further distally, you're going to go on to the trapezium. Now, sometimes you may fall onto the base of the thumb, the base of the first metacarpal. So what you could do is palpate for the joint space between the trapezium and the base of the first metacarpal just to uh, get a perspective as to where you are and then you'll know that you're then just on the trapezium. Uh, the next bone we're going to palpate is the pisiform. So if you go along the anterior surface of the ulnar to the distal part right where the head of the ulnar is, move ever so slightly and you're going to find this bony prominence. This is the pisiform. From there, if we move just on a slight diagonal towards the base of the second digit, is going to be the hamate. Now this is the hook of the hamate, so sometimes you have to press deep in there sometimes with your thumb, but I could feel it right there. Now the next bone is going to be the triquitrum. We're going to go along the medial uh, surface of the ulnar all the way down to the head of the ulnar. If you just move off the head of the ulnar into the soft joint space, your finger will be overlying the triquitrum. With that, if you go ahead and move the wrist into radial deviation, the triquitrum will be a little bit more prominent. And if you move it uh, into um, ulnar deviation, it's going to kind of disappear from your finger. Um, a couple other uh, carpal bones remain, and that is we're going to find Lister's tubercle. Right, so we learned that if you go to the radial styloid process, moving around posteriorly, there'll be a little oblong ridge. From there, that's your reference point. If you move just slightly distally in line with the, the base of the third metacarpal, you're going to be over the lunate. So what you'll do is go into flexion, and the lunate will come up under your finger. If you move away, it'll uh, also move away. So in flexion, the lunate will be prominent, and then extension will kind of disappear. From there, you just move slightly distally from the lunate, still in line with the base of the third metacarpal, and you're going to come on to the um, capitate. Right? And the same thing if you do some flexion and extension of the wrist, you're going to be able to palpate a little bit easier when it's in flexion. From that point, you're going to move slightly laterally um, in line with the base of the second metacarpal, and that's where you're going to find the trapezoid. Right, you can also go a little flexion extension to be able to palpate that uh, bone.